Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good afternoon friends, we are continuing our discussion on aircraft dynamic stability and we by now we are very clear that our approach will be as I illustrated through mass spring damper system, our approach is identify the equilibrium state. perturbed it small perturbation very small perturbation and then write the equation of motion. So, if you recall when you wrote the equation m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x equal to f of t this x x of t these were perturbed variable that is the distance or displacement from the equilibrium. So, in our sense this is the perturbed quantity. Okay. So, we wrote the equation of motion in terms of perturbed quantity and then we try to find out its roots and start to study the behavior of the perturbed quantity x of t and if it is oxidatory, if it is coming just to the trim without any oscillation. So, we say it corresponds to either oxidatory return under damping case or over damp case or a critical damp case, but the catch point was this x of t is basically measured with respect to the equilibrium or the another way of understanding is if I disturb it and withdraw it, I say how this motion variable which is a perturbed quantity is behaving and based on that we decide we say that it is dynamically stable or not. Right? Now, we wanted to use this understanding, we wanted to extend this understanding for analyzing aircraft dynamic stability. So, what we did? We said we also will write equations of motion of airplane. In fact, to be more precise, we also know that we have to write perturbed equation of motion for the airplane because these are perturbed equation of motion, okay, because these are measured from the equilibrium when the perturbation was introduced. We wanted to develop such equation of motion, which is a perturbed equation of motion for the airplane, but what was our approach? We said initially we will write generic equation of motion of the airplane, then we will introduce perturbation and try to get perturbed equation of motion. And in that approach we said we will use Newton's laws of motion and that is external force is equal to m v rate of change of momentum. Similarly, external applied moment is rate of change of angular momentum and we all know angular momentum is the moment of the momentum, moment of the linear momentum to be more precise r cross m v. We all know this, but what is another point? We also noticed here if I want to implement these laws of motion, Newton's laws of motion, I need to ensure that we are applying with respect to inertial frame. And you know inertial frame is a frame having no acceleration, right. So, we started developing equations of motion, but not perturbed equation of motion for airplane so far. We are not writing equations of motion and we found out two important relation that F equal to m d v c is the center of mass by d t and then we got was m moment equal to if I write it correctly it will be uh, d by d t of h x i plus y, j, e and z, k 
you could see I am writing E E here, subscript E F for unit vector, because we are very much clear and cautious about the fact that if I want to apply this M equal to rate of change of angular momentum, I have to apply it in inertial frame. So, this I, J, and K, they are the unit vectors aligned in the inertial frame of reference. And for our case, earth fish axis system has been chosen as inertial frame, although we know earth is not inertial frame because it is rotating. But we know since we are doing dynamic stability analysis, which is for a very short period, so we can make this assumption for all simplification not much error will be introduced for dynamic stability analysis. Okay. This is one understanding we had and we also developed the expression for H x. Let me write here. I also have requested you please do yourself these derivations because there may be some sleep from my side. You young man should be able to derive this following my lecture. This is H x, this is H y. I say X x to be more consistent. I U I z, S z to minus P I x z minus Q I y z plus r i z z. Okay, let me see, h x is p i x minus q i x y minus r i x z, h y is minus p i x y plus q i y minus r i y z and s z is minus p i x z minus q i y z plus r i z z. And we also wrote i x y is nothing but x y d m. Similarly, i x z is integral x z d m and you all know i x s will be integral y square plus z square d m. These are by definition. So, up to this point we have no issues, but we should not forget when we are deriving all those h x, h y, s z, these are with respect to the inertial frame. That means, p, q, r here are with respect to the inertial frame. Okay. Now, you imagine even this i x, y, s, i y, y all are with respect to inertial frame. Now, you imagine a situation, this is the airplane, let us say this is your inertial frame. I say earth, x earth, y earth and z earth. Right. Now, the body will rotate because of its dynamics. So, now what will happen? The moment of inertia of this body with respect to x, y, z, e inertial frame of axis will go on changing as the body oscillates. Right. So, then it is very difficult to very cumbersome to in introduce those things. That means, Every time you have to compute i x s for a different different instant of time, finding the orientation, etcetera, etcetera. This is one. The moment of inertia will go on changing if I am using x, y, z earth frame reference system. That create complication and will become very cumbersome. We are not happy with dealing those. Also, you understand that the uh, the force, aerodynamic force, is acting on the airplane depends upon the air relative speed. As I told you last class, if the airplane is stationary on the ground, it will experience no aerodynamic force. The airplane is stationary on the ground, however, wind starts blowing, then it will experience drag force or, or lift force. Right? So, it is the air relative speed that is important, not ground speed. So, it is better to work in terms of body frame. Right? If I choose a body frame, if I am allowed to operate, Knowing very well, body frame is not an inertial frame. So I say x, x, y, z. Let this body frame means it is fixed with the body, and as the body rotates, this frame also rotates. So one thing is sure: the moment of inertia now will not change about this axis. 
because the axis is also moving. Then also the aerodynamic forces will be proportional to the relative air speed. So, along x, y, z is really equal compute. But what is the problem? Problem is this is a non-inertial frame because it is a rotating frame. So, how do I apply Newton's laws of motion? It says it has to be inertial frame. So, if I somehow find out a way to apply this without violating this understanding that it has to be applied on an inertial frame and still operate on a rotating frame, my job is done. That means, I am asking a question, what is the equivalent way of handling this problem by operating at a rotating frame, still this violation will not be there that it is not an inertial frame. That means, if you are operating in a rotating frame, if I know what sort of a correction I have to add with the rotation frame, rotational frame derived expression, what additional correction I should make, so that equivalently it will become as if I am operating in inertial frame as far as mathematics is concerned. Right. If that is true, then let us have a closer look here. So, I give title to make things clear working in rotating frame. Frame or body frame. Right? So, now our approach is very simple. I want to operate in a rotating frame. I know Newton's law, if I want to apply, it has to be in a non rotating, non accelerating frame. So, I say I will operate in a rotating frame because I have two distinct advantages and tell me what correction I have to make, add to this result mathematically, so that it is equivalently as if I am working in a non rotating frame or inertial frame. Right. See here, mathematically, if I see external force causing acceleration, mathematically I need a derivative dv by dt. Similarly, here also m, you see it is a question of dh by dt, that is derivative of a vector. If I want to do a derivative of a vector in inertial frame, suppose this is an inertial frame, x c, y e, z e, let us say v equal to u i plus v j earth plus w k earth, let us say v star. So, if I do d v star by d t, I see one is d u by d t into i e, second term is u into d i e by d t. Similarly, other term will come. But if I am working in inertial frame as it is here, d i e by d t is 0, because it is fixed. But if I want to do this derivative in a rotating frame, if I want to find it in rotating frame, then d i by d t or d j by d t or d k by d t unit vectors, they are not equal to 0 in rotating frame, that is the problem. Right? So, naturally, I have to put some extra terms, so that there is an equivalence. And what is that? You know from my last lecture, that is, if I want to derive derivative of a vector in a, let us say, d a by d t, if I want it in an inertial frame, this is equivalently d a by d t in rotating frame plus whatever the frame rotation is there cross a. This is the correction if you add on d a by d t evaluate a rotating frame. If I add this to, it is equivalently as if you are working in inertial frame. The derivation in the last uh, module, I have already shown, you can see a textbook also. But as far as application point is concerned, you should now see that we have solved that riddle that we want to operate 
in d a by d t inertial frame or rate of change of momentum, rate of change of angular momentum, we have to evaluate in inertial frame. But now what we are doing, we will evaluate in rotating frame because we have some advantages and to make it equivalent to inertial frame, we will add this omega cross here. We add this to, so it is equivalent to working in inertial frame. So, I will look now towards this right hand side and that will fulfill my desire that I still work on rotating frame, because I know there are some advantages for this specific case to work in rotating frame. It is not a generic statement for this case, yes it is ok, right. So, now we will apply this understanding and see what happens. I will write here, you see inertial frame it was m d v c by d t at inertial frame. So, this v c everything was measured with respect to the inertial frame. Similarly, m was rate of change of angular momentum again with respect to the inertial frame, but now we want to work in rotating frame equivalently. What we will do? We will say f equal to m d v c by d t evaluate it as rotating frame plus omega cross v c. We are using this relationship. Similarly, we will write m as d h by d t evaluated at body frame or rotating frame will same thing plus omega cross h. What is omega? Omega is the angular velocity of the frame with respect to the inertial frame. Correct? What is omega? Omega is the angular velocity of the rotating frame with respect to inertial frame, right. Now, please understand the next step. What is V c? How I am going to expand V c in rotating frame? In rotating frame, how I am going to express it? I wanted to work in rotating frame. So, I will write this equal to u into i plus v into j plus w into k, they are the unit vector. What are these i, j, k? i, j, k are the unit vector of the body frame, right. Remember, d i by d t, d j by d t, d k by d t is non-zero, right. But we, since we are giving this correction omega cross v c, we can directly take the derivative in a standard form and because the rotation part of the vector gets corrected through omega cross v c. So, what are the u v w? u v w are the component of the velocity of the frame or the body with respect to inertial frame, but resolved along body axis x y z. Let us understand this. If this is your airplane, this is the body axis x, the y, this is z and here it is x earth, y earth, z earth. Then what is this v c? v c is the velocity of the center of mass, because we have seen from the first law that even if the force are distributed for translation motion, you can assume whole mass is concentrated at the center of mass, at the point mass. And take the resultant of all the forces acting in different component and transfer it to the point mass and write f equal to m. So, v c is the velocity of the center of mass with respect to v c with respect to inertial frame. But then when I write like this, what I am saying? V c is expressed as which is the velocity of the body or frame, as for inertial frame, resolved along local i, j and k, 
unit vectors are resolved along local body axis. So, you are now operating in body frame. Similarly, omega when I write p i plus q j plus r k, what is the interpretation? Omega is the angular velocity of the body or the frame, they are same because axis is fixed, frame is fixed to the body. So, the angular velocity of the body or the frame with respect to inertial frame, however, this p q r are the component of that omega resolved along i j k body axis. Clear? These are two important understanding you must have. Once I have that and once I have this relationship, I can easily find out some expression which will be very interesting. Let me erase this. Let me start with f is equal to m d v c by d t plus omega cross v c. Let us see, let us do some vectors, simple elementary operation. You know v c is nothing but u i plus v j plus w k. So, I can write f is equal to m d by d t of u i plus v j plus w k plus omega, you know p i plus q j plus r k cross u i plus v j plus w k. Right? M d v c, this is nothing but v c, we have seen, this is nothing but w or oh, sorry, this is nothing but omega and this is again v c. Clear? Please understand, we are now operating in the body frame now. So, this when I, when I am doing the derivative in body frame, I am not bothered about d i by d t no more, because those things have been corrected here. Simply you take derivative with respect to the scalar term. So, you will get f equal to m u dot plus q w minus r v. This is one expression you will get, because this is f x, f x, because you understand f is nothing but f x i plus f y j plus f z k. So, what are f x, f y, f z? They are the component of force f resolved along body i j k axis system. Right? So, if I do this vector operation, like simply have to write here f x i plus f y j plus f z k, then I do this derivative, it will be u dot, this will be v dot, but j will be there, w dot k will be there, we will define the cross product, we will get this equation f x equal to that, f y equal to m v dot plus u r minus w p and f z equal to m w dot minus u q plus v p. You see here, if I was operating in inertial frame, everything was inertial frame, that is, this derivative was on inertial frame, then it would be f x equal to m u dot, this thing will not come, because that time there are no such angular velocities correction omega cross v c. Right? So, now it is very clear, you are operating in the body frame, but same time you are maintaining the understanding that Neutral application is valid only in inertial frame by using this correction. That is, uh, what is that correction? Is d a by d t inertial frame 
can be equivalently operated as dA by dt body frame plus omega cross A. This understanding we have applied and we have got f x f y f z expression. Why we are getting all this thing? Because we want to write equation of motion, but these are not perturbed equation of motion unlike the mass spring system. Right? This is general equation of motion. We will be extracting perturbed equation of motion by doing another stage of mathematical treatment. Okay.